Hello, welcome to one of the second sessions at DDD 2021. It's my great pleasure to be joined by Elder Huitenbuer and um, Olena Bozenko this morning. Um, I'm looking forward to their session on impactful mentorship. And because you didn't all arrive to hear me speak, I will hand over to Elder with no further ado. So thank you, Rick, and thank you everyone for being here today. So yeah, I hope you're enjoying the conference so far. Uh, DDD is one of my favorite events. Unfortunately, I've never been there in person yet, but hopefully next time. Uh, but yeah, I really enjoy them and as well as virtual. And so uh, at least we can do this now and we can still share our knowledge even in these crazy times. So thank you everyone for being here. A few quick uh, slides on, okay, please behave like the code of conduct. Um, basically, just uh, treat others as you want to be treated. Um, and if you are not being nice, then we will kick you out, basically. That's what it says here. Um, if you want to donate, please do. Uh, all the donations go to the National Museum of Computing, which I heard is an amazing place. I hope to visit uh, sometime myself soon. I've actually visited once uh, virtually, but I definitely want to go there in person as well. Of course, thanks to all the sponsors, because without the sponsors, these kind of events cannot be done. So thank you sponsors for uh, helping us setting these events up. And of course, make some noise around the event. So make sure that you tweet uh, on these hashtags and like says, enjoy your day. And with that, Olena, can you do a little bit of introduction? Of course, of course I can. So um, our session uh, will be today about our past uh, how we met with Elder, how we uh, basically um, started uh, communicate and how we started uh, to work together on different sessions, how we got involved with the community. We want to share our experience, my experience as a new speaker that uh, when I was starting my journey during the pandemic and uh, Elder want to share his experience. How was it for him to uh, guide an experienced uh, uh, speaker in the community. So with this, uh, we want to also introduce a, a couple of words about ourselves personally. Um, my name is Lana Brozanko, just once again, um, <laughs> to, to pronounce it properly. And um, I'm originally from Ukraine and I currently live in Berlin, in Germany. Uh, in one Oh, not in one week. It's actually on Monday. I'm starting uh, in the company Spirit, so uh, proud, very proud of it. And uh, my position is actually like um, not position, but I'm working as a software developer, software engineer, whatever is needed. And Elder. <clears throat> yes. Yeah, so um, uh, welcome, Elena. And so I'm Elder Grotenburg. Um, I work at Motion 10. Uh, we focus on mostly Microsoft uh, technologies, but myself, I focus mostly on Azure and integration. So I'm technologically there, so I work with a lot of different clients and around that. Also an Azure FP, so I love working with the community. So I do a lot of speaking, blogging, I wrote some books, I write articles. So basically anything I can do with the community, I try to do. Um, and of course, you can always reach out to me on Twitter as well. So if you have any questions, any remarks, please let us know. Amazing, thank you. So um, what was the starting point, basically? Uh, how, it is, uh, how, how does it happen that uh, I got to know Elder and I got involved with the community? Um, it's actually not that serious story. Like there is um, uh, no, <laughs> no, no official part in it. Like it's j it happened to be a party. It's, it's like by surprise, of course. So it was a Christmas time earlier this year um, and Luckily, we have a very um, big amount of very active people in the community and they try to help everyone else to stay in like kind of in a group, like not to not to be outsiders, not to be alone, not to feel lonely. So many people uh, were creating different online events and um, we have one of our friends, um, Dylan Beatty, that um, organized a Christmas party, online Christmas party. He played music, he invited some friends, and basically um, just to uh, spend time together nicely and get to know some new people, maybe make some new friends. And uh, that's exactly was the time and place when we met with Elder. And uh, for me, it was very, um, like unexpected uh, turn, let's say like this, because we started to talk. I had no idea who Elder is. I had no idea what he's doing. For me, it was just random person, but we had a really, really nice conversation going on. And 
afterwards, um, he actually introduced it and told me a bit about himself, that he is doing speaking, that he is uh, involved with the community. And I was very curious to see actually how, how does it look from the side. And um, I remember that back to the time at that you had like around three sessions uh, per, per week or something like this. And you've invited me to have a look uh, and sit there to see how it's happening, to have a session on a conference or online event. Um, I remember that for me it was just fascinating. How does someone can handle this amount of sessions? Like, do you actually work? Because we were speaking with you, uh, like talking every day, and you were do doing sessions and you were also working. So for me, um, it was uh, just an example. <clears throat> sorry, it was just an example of um, how much patience and how much um, uh, like dedication you have to the community. And uh, I realized that all everyone in the community are like this because you also introduced me to your other friends. And that was basically the start of the <laughs> start of the journey. Um, one day you told me that I have to try as well. Um, I shared my story with you, I shared my experience, and you was that person that, that believed in me more than I was believing in myself. And you just told me, just you you just have to try, just go and do it. And like, yeah, that's not that easy. And you said, yes, that's exactly that easy. So do you remember basically how um, you, what, what, what was my first step? Uh, but what did you do from uh, at this point to make me move forward? <laughs> yeah. So basically at this point, we started talking a bit about that. You told me like, OK, so this side looks interesting, but um, I would like to get a bit more involved in the community. And then we start talking, OK, so what are your options like? Because the community, of course, is a very broad, uh, broad thing that you can talk about. And you were the one when you talk about getting involved with the community is about, OK, so I want to share my story. I want to uh, do something where I can uh, basically also contribute to the community and help the community back. So we started to start talking about options and the one of course we're talking about today uh, will be about speaking. So uh, speaking of course is something I enjoy very much myself. Uh, it's one of the most interactive because you get to speak with the audience, uh, especially when you go back into in person, which uh, you actually start in virtual. So for you it's a bit different, but still like you have to have the audience under the chat and they are asking questions. Um, sometimes they're actually on camera, other times they're not, but speaking is the most interactive part of uh, the community. Of course, we also talk about different options, like speaking is one of them, and that's how we met, of course, but I also talked a bit about like, if you don't want to speak, like if you don't feel like you want to go out all the way right away, you can also just start a blog, a blog, blog on your own, like you can start talking about your experiences. I ran into this today and this is how I solved it, or hey, this is an interesting scenario I was thinking of, or something like that. Um, you can also, of course, start writing, uh, so <coughs> articles, books, uh, those kind of things. Like that's also like a lot of people in the community actually share their knowledge through writing these kind of things, and a lot of people actually really enjoy this. Like one of our good friends, David Whitney, really enjoys writing. Actually, wrote some books for children, for example, like mm -hmm. for children to get started with coding. So that's also one way. Or of course, and this is more came uh, up a lot, a lot more during the pandemic, of course, but video recording. Before the pandemic, there were also, also people doing this, but during the pandemic, we actually have a huge uptake because everyone was sitting at home anyway. So people started recording videos, doing tutorials, uh, sharing knowledge. And of course, like even like these events are being recorded these days and we are also sharing those recordings. And finally, you could also just say, well, I'm a coder and I just want to contribute code. And of course, this is also an option like code contributions, like uh, just put up a public GitHub repository um, and just share your code, like share code samples, share uh, best practices, those kind of things. And all of these are basically viable options um, for getting started with the community. Yeah, and then I remember that you looked something like this. <laughs> yeah, that was just uh, just a few options. But I remember that you uh, actually while, while you were explaining me, there was like more and more. And then the, uh, there could be se seminars, there could be some online events, there could be some in person. And like, yes, this is like the main things, but there is much more as well. And I remember sitting like, so OK, <laughs> so what can I do? Like it's not it doesn't make anything clear for me at that point. No, but actually from on the other hand, it was really, really great to see the spectrum. Basically, how many things 
that I don't need to be afraid that I'm if I'm not a good speaker, or if I'm not a good writer, that I'm out of community, like I cannot do anything else. For me, it was um, just to understand, realize and calm myself that I, there is always the way it just depends on, you know, uh, to find this way and um, just keep going to just keep doing uh, what I like and keep sharing with people. So I was very confused but I still decided that I will try. Actually, back then I, I decided that I uh, still, I, I still had no idea if I really want to do this or not, but I was like, you know, like a very, very, um, uh, like a scary, um, I don't know, kid or anyone, like making very uh, small steps, trying to, to, to try to see how it's gonna work, but I was still not sure if I really, really, really gonna, gonna do this. But your support and support also everyone else from community was kind of, kind of helping to move forward, um, regardless all the all the hesitation and doubts. And when I was making my first step, basically my first step, I would say was the abstract uh, of the first session. Um, I had a lot of questions like how to write an abstract. It's very easy. It's very easy to say you have to write a short description of, of the session you want to pull together. But uh, for me, never even uh, like seen how the session looks might look like. I never been in, at the conference before, to be honest, uh, before I start speaking. So I had no idea actually um, how it looks like. And the abstract for me is like, okay, the small piece of text, but there is definitely should be some idea like how to put it together. And all those questions started like coming up in my head. Um, is there is any structure? How can I just select the topic? And uh, how, well, how can I start on creating a session and so on, so on, so on. And uh, you with a very, <laughs> very big amount of patience, like sitting by sitting with me and by answering all those questions and what was trying to help me actually to um, find my way with, with building those abstracts. Yeah, so um, and here it was to like before, even before the abstract, we were talking about OK, but what can we talk about? How do I create a session? Where can I submit it? Like those all those different kinds of questions and this is really that step into the unknown, like, OK, I want to start speaking, but what do I speak about? Like, I remember that we had a lot of conversations around this, like, um, I want to speak, but what do I even speak about? Because there's just so many things we can speak about. So many things are already being spoken about. How do I get started? Where can I submit? Because I, there's a lot of different conferences out there, but I have no idea uh, how we can actually do this. And then we start just started talking about, OK, it's not like uh, you just have to get started, like you already said, like just get started. Think of your story, like what is something that you are passionate about? What is your story? Um, just describe it shortly. Um, you don't have to immediately have the whole story there. Just describe it shortly for your um, for your sub abstract and then just um, go from there. And of course, uh, there's a lot of different events out there, especially these days. Like there's so many online events at the moment, so many meetups, but also in person. Like if I wanted to, like before the whole pandemic started, if you wanted to, you could basically be at a meetup every day of the week because there's just so many out there. Uh -huh. So you just have to get started, like find some people that are like, OK, um, we bring a podium for a new speaker and just get started on there. So we did answer a lot of them, but of course, a lot of them were still unanswered. Yeah, that's like uh, read the manual of how to drive a car or something. You know? Like good to know, but <laughs> there's many, many uh, uncertainties. I, um, I remember that uh, back then uh, you were still not my kind of officially officially matter, so we didn't really like speak about it. Uh, but you were you had a lot of experience. You have a lot of experience, and I I was asking you more like you know uh, from the friend perspective, like can you how is it how is it can you tell me can you share me can you like it was uh, curiosity uh, with some kind of uh, you know. Um, like reaching for advice from someone more experienced, but that was as the point the time when you uh, saw that I really, really want to try this and you took this initiative and said like, what about mentoring? Like I can help you with this. I remember that you were like very, very um, confident and this also helped me to actually uh, go for it. And you were, you told me that um, I can help you I can guide you. I will not gonna do anything for you, but I will be there to uh, to find some uh, answers on questions and so on. And that was uh, the 
moment when you told me I'm going to mentor you and that was officially like that was serious. That was really getting to the serious point. And um, you told me that I have to uh, that I can try uh, go and speak and because I was remember I was complaining to you. Oh, writing is not my thing. I was really bad in school. I was this and this. I was complaining about about uh, not complaining, but it's it's just scary to imagine that one day you will be doing something like this. And you told me then go and, and try to speak because for speaking, speaking is not anyhow easier than any other aspect like writing blogs or books and so on. It's also it's all very, very complicated, but at least um, it's uh, to share your story. It might be just a bit more comfort, like more comfortable for for some people. For some people, writing is more comfortable. But uh, uh, from the amount of talking <laughs> we had, uh, I believe that you recognize it for me. So it will be easier to start with speaking actually. And uh, if I um, want to be a public speaker, I remember that you told me that there is a certain uh, steps uh, before I have to do, right? Uh, besides the all the environment, like I have the whole setup uh, as a like what I need to do because it was online. It was all online back then. So camera and microphone and, and your background and everything, everything. There's the whole kind of um, ritual before you need to you need to do to actually start with something but it was all uh, it's it's not mandatory right um, as you told me it's good to have because this is uh, this makes it easier for people and so on but it's not mandatory what is really really important and mandatory is to find actually um the way how to uh, how to do, like share with people um and again going back to our friends actually um I remember that I saw once video from Dylan Beatty uh, that called the art of code. Uh, it was his presentation on uh, what conference in DC was or NDC. Yeah, it was on NDC and uh, th this is, it's amazing presentation. Like if someone ha haven't seen it, please go check it. But uh, that was um, a great um, example for me of how I would like to speak at one like maybe one day at the stage because he kept attention and he kept the uh, attention from people from the very beginning to to the very end and i just asked i was asking myself constantly why am i why i cannot stop listening why i cannot like uh, uh, change the focus on something else why what makes me so interested in, in his talk and wh while i was while i was thinking about it i was trying to understand what makes me um like you know uh, interested in the talk so I can try to also present in a more or less kind of the same manner um, and you gave me also a lot of a lot of different points a lot of uh, inputs on how to, how you do this I remember that we were sitting with you and you were actually explaining me every detail of how you present uh, when you're online or you on the stage and about first session format, uh, if you remember, maybe you can say a couple of words how you actually were for formulating it. <laughs> Basically, what is important here, like uh, because the like I said, like we know a lot of friends, uh, we have a lot of friends that are speaking, but in the end, you need to find a format that works for you. For example, uh, Rick that we just saw, like Rick likes waving around, uh, jumping around on stage, <laughs> uh, uh, throwing around his hair, and being very energetic. Where myself, I'm like more like I'm standing there, I'm doing my conversation. Uh, like Dylan Beatty, he makes a whole show out of his uh, session. Uh, where others are more like, okay, I'm just like, I know people that just stand at their laptop, just uh, do speaking, and also are much more energetic. And in the end, it comes down like, don't just, of course, you need to watch other people, like, you need to watch, okay, what do other people do that captivates the audience? But also you have to find what works for you because um, for me, for example, I could never be that energetic as Rick is, uh, for example, like Rick is a very outgoing person on stage and that is his thing. But for me, it wouldn't work. So if I would do that kind of talk, it would just seem very forced and I would not get my, say, my, my message delivered. So it's really important that you look at, okay, what is comfortable for you and actually do that kind of, um, that you make sure that you make, find your own way to do this. Yeah, that uh, that's that was very good advice. Uh, actually, it was pretty clear uh, that 
you should not mimic anyone. You should not try to repeat after someone else because you would never like that would just not work. You would just go there on the stage. You would get stressed. You would you would really um, you would not be able to deliver as you want. You would not be happy afterwards with the result because you tried to mimic and you would not you you were not feeling even this uh, the way how you present. And it was obvious. Yes. But how how then you can find your way and so on. Um, you gave me advice to check out different videos on first of all. Um, not everyone is great speaker from the beginning, right? It's a learning path. So first okay. of all, try to understand how to make everything like your surrounding uh, while you're speaking more comfortable for you. So how to actually build a nice presentation that will support you, or that will support your session, your talk, how you speak in, and uh, what kind of uh, techniques of how to basically control your voice. Of course, it's not it's not always working. You can know like thousands of tips, advices and so on. It's not, not always working, but just uh, being aware that there are some things that might help you already already kind of um, makes it a bit easier. And you sent me um, some videos and what uh, first one was, uh, I guess, about PowerPoint, how to avoid that by PowerPoint, right? Um, where um, Guy actually showed a great, great example of how the PowerPoint can be really annoying or really, really supportive while, while you're talking. And after that, I, I also saw this, um, the 110 techniques of communication, public speaking, and um, it was also fascinating for me that there's a whole science behind it. I, I had no idea. I saw that you just go out there and you just either grade by your own or like not. Yeah. But yeah, there is a, a many, many uh, points to be aware of. And of course, this is a learning path not of, of a day, months or year. I would say that it's, um, I don't know, maybe Rick would, would really, uh, <laughs> uh, I guess, uh, will be good to say how many years it's taken really to, to develop your style, to develop um, your, um, your way of presenting. Uh, and that was actually uh, good to know. And from the perspective that, OK, I would not be good from the beginning, but I will get there eventually if I would work hard enough, if I would really be dedicated to it. Because this is a very, um, when, when someone's starting to do something new, you never tried before, it's very easy to, you know, to fail without even be actually dedicated to this because of, you know, this disappointment, oh, I'm not good enough, I cannot do this. But you cannot be good enough from the beginning. You have to, like, being aware that it's a <clears throat> pass help me to be prepared uh, for the, that I have to work hard and invest time, first of all. So from that, I has been understood. Yeah, oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> has been understood basically what we, how much things we have to do to start that it's uh, uh, for, for speaking, it's a lot, and how to put a presentation, it's a lot. Uh, we have to actually start to do something, right? Yeah, so uh, you now we're like, okay, I now kind of know what I have to focus on, like when I'm going to start speaking, but then of course comes the uh, actual, okay, um, I, I'm going to start speaking, now I actually have to set up content. Um, so what are we going to talk about? How do I set this up? Because of course we talked about, okay, this is what you need to watch out for and all that kind of things. But at some point you actually have to start creating something. And first uh, of all, you have to pick the topic. And uh, yeah, this is really about, okay, so what am I going to talk about? And how did you approach this? Um, I think that you gave me a couple of tips or advices and or advice like uh, that I have to really be into the story I'm trying to tell. Because I was also like, OK, I, I was doing this, I was in this project and this and this and this like, but I don't know what to choose. I don't know what to like, how to, um, you know, how to uh, create the session, how to put the content together. Uh, but you told me like, I, I don't have to overthink it. I just have to, how, I'm, uh, how I was telling you the story, I just have to do the same, but just make it in more like, like structured format and, and everything. And you just said to, write down the sentences, the ideas, like literally I was in a project for this and this and I had this problem and we solved it like this. And what and like 
couple of uh, bullet points of uh, what do I actually want to share with people um, from the uh, Maybe I want to share how I was solving. Maybe I want to share how the team was engaged in the, in the problem. Maybe I want to share what kind of technical uh, issues we had. So just a couple of bullet points and the whole and the sentence. What about the actual content? Well, indeed, like uh, what I told you, like it doesn't matter what you talk about it as long as you're passionate about it, because if you're passionate about it, then you will make a great story out of it. Yeah, that's true. And um, the next step. I wrote down a couple of ideas, so I basically just went through. It was also great for me to to make it have a retrospective of my experience. I went through uh, all the projects I had or everything what I was doing. I wrote down things that were just like I found it interesting. I, that was challenging for me. It doesn't have to be super smart. It doesn't have to be uh, like uh, you know. It's a huge problem, huge technical issue that I solved and like, OK, it was just challenging for me and I saw that maybe it would be interesting for someone else. Maybe not. I don't know. I should try. And um, from the uh, from basically having already some ideas, um, the next part was even harder than the previous one. <laughs> now I needed to actually write um, an abstract and write a title. And when you're doing this, not on a daily basis, but when you're doing this all the time, when you have already a bit of experience, it's kind of like, um, you know, you already, you learned how to be creative. You know how to do this. So maybe that's that's the, not the right say, way to say it, learn to be creative. But if you do this quite often, it's kind of, um, I don't know, I think maybe and that you, you, you know how, you would know how to explain, but it's like, it's getting easier. Yeah, like with everything, like the more you do it, the easier it becomes. So it's the same with this. Like the first time you sit down and have to write an abstract and think of a title like it lost like I think I remember like we were just sitting there for a couple of hours, just thinking like, OK, the, the, this is the title. Like we started with like, OK, just a title, but like simple title, very simple abstract, like three, two or three lines. And then we started like actually working on it. So, OK, so uh, what if you add this like and then you're like, OK, I want to really write this. And basically you just spent about a few hours on a three paragraph abstract, like I think about 12 or maybe 15 lines in total. Yeah. Uh, we expand, but uh, but over time, like uh, you did this more often, and uh, the more often you do it, the easier it becomes. Because at some point, you start really noticing, like, okay, this is how, like, this is the form, and you also start to remember, like, oh, I, the last time I did like this and this, so if I do it like this and this, like, every time you do this, it becomes a little bit easier. But definitely, the first time you do this, it's definitely one of the hardest parts to actually write down your thoughts in a short way, but still interesting way, so that when someone sees this, they actually want to like, hey, this looks interesting. Yeah, uh, you said a couple of hours. A couple of hours came after almost a couple of weeks of struggling, of really not being able to find a way uh, how to. I don't know. I mean, for me, it's 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 really a bit hard to writing is not my thing. I mean, writing code is one thing, but not writing like poems or whatever. It's always hard to to put your thoughts on the paper, and it was a couple of weeks. I'm like, hmm, I had no idea even how to approach it. It's not even like how, what to write, but how to approach, write the title. Yes, but but how? Like, it has to uh, be something you would really feel like, you know, and. Uh, but somehow we managed. I remember that at some point you told me, let's have a look, let's sit together and I will help you guys. So you really help, help me to find this uh, like approach to, to my thoughts, to my head and actually learn the way how to put it, pull it out of there and put it on the paper. And uh, it was really hard for me to do this, to do the things. And I was asking um, our friends from from community like how how they do this i was very curious i remember i was asking martin i was asking dave and i was also was uh, asked once uh, david whitney about it um i was uh, um, we had a nice conversation going and, and he told me that he wrote the books and he told me that he had like many different sessions um and i was very fascinated like how oh, but how do you do this like how actually um, and he's he wrote me it's a, literally I copy pasted a message from our chat and I asked him if he fi fine with this he was totally fine so um, this is uh, this message made like really changed something in my head like it, it doesn't have to be groundbreaking or, or difficult or important most things things are not so he just told me 
it doesn't have to be even that smart or whatever you're doing. It doesn't have to be even that technical. Just share something uh, you like. Just uh, write it down in the way you feel. And there's going to be someone in the audience. Someone will be interested in it uh, or maybe similar story. There's definitely going to be um, someone who will uh, click with you or like find this connection that you will be able to share and, and maybe help or ch change something you know so yeah, i so, yeah <laughs> so this was point where we're like okay um, uh, you have now share something uh, so you really have to think of okay what subject and uh, this uh, basically goes into what david whitney told you as well so this is something I think very important to give to anyone that wants to start speaking on, this, on themselves. Like when you decide on a subject, you don't have to be a pro in that area. Just share your story that, because that's what people are looking for. Because anyone can go out to the documentation and read uh, anything. Anyone can uh, actually go on and Google something, but it's really about your experiences. So you have to decide like, OK, I did this and I did it because of this reason or hey, I thought this was interesting because it was the first time I worked with something or um, hey, this is a way I've not seen before. Maybe someone might be interested in it. Um, so it's really about your experience, your story. So don't if you want to get started with speaking, don't feel like, oh, I don't know enough or I do have to be better or oh, but if uh, Dylan Beatty is talking about something I cannot talk about anymore because no, just share your own experience and really like it's about your story. And that's I think the most important part when you want to speak about something, just speak about something that's really close to your own heart. But I think it's also uh, this is the point um, that should be reminded to people more often because we have, uh, you know, online especially never read comments, right? <laughs> never go and, and check like some comments on YouTube or whatever, whatever. people might be in, in you know like people sometimes not in a good mood something they can write the give a bad feedback just bad comment or whatever and it's uh, people just afraid because of this you know it's like no one wants to hear bad things about uh, themselves i mean maybe someone in general but in general uh, that's exactly the you know the this like fear maybe this uh, insecurities or something like this uh, is creating the blocker in the head like oh i cannot do this because I have to be a pro, I have to be like superstar and then I will try to do and share with someone because otherwise people will tell me that I'm stupid or I don't know something. And this is a huge, huge impediment uh, between people. Um, I saw so many like really brilliant, super smart uh, people that are younger even than me and they had so many ideas and so many, but they are like, yeah, but I'm not a professional. I don't know. I cannot uh, share this uh, because because everyone will tell me that I don't know this well enough or good enough. And I think that it's a community really losing in it. But of course, like it's nothing. It's not that we can change it like this. It's just uh, uh, reminding ourselves and everyone around that. No, you don't have to be. We are interested in the story. And uh, you told you were telling me this thousand times. Uh, people would be interested in the story. If not, you'll find something else to share. But it's also it's uh, not just me sharing and people listening it's also it's working in other direction i'm learning something from people so i'm receiving feedback i'm uh, you know understanding what i want to share maybe i shared one story and then uh, but i actually can talk also about different things you know so it's um um the whole <laughs> ecosystem around it i would say yes. so then we start writing the abstract and so this was really the point like okay we, you decided on your subject and it was like um, okay let's actually uh, start writing abstract and writing abstract uh, we're just going to go, go to this a bit quickly but just, but just for people that are like okay so i want to start speaking myself how do i actually write it abstract because and uh, uh, abstract should give you just enough details to actually know okay this session is interesting uh, without giving away like, OK, uh, this is what my session is going to be. Like, don't write an essay of uh, five papers, uh, five pages, because no one's going to read to that and you will if not even get to the CFP. But give just, just enough details to the, so that the organizers and the at least both know like this will make an interesting uh, session. So they know like, OK, this is what we're going to talk about. Uh, this is what we can expect. And if you want to start writing your own abstracts, I, there's two blog posts I want to uh, give out. Like I also, Elena knows about this, of course, but 
So once again, two of our friends, Dylan Beattie and Martin Twaits, both really have written about this. So Dylan Beattie wrote about, okay, how to uh, respond or how not to respond to an CFP. Like if you write an abstract, what should you put in there? What you shouldn't put in there? And also Martin Twaits story uh, for 1000 submissions to 100 slots. And this is uh, something that every uh, conference organizes rec uh, recognizes. Because when we create a conference, like I, uh, I myself am hosting Ash Lowlands, like Rick today is doing DDD. Like when you could create a conference, uh, you, will, you open up the CFP, you will get so many amazing submissions. And then you have to start like, you start like, okay, these are the sessions that don't fit, are not written well, uh, are not on the subject that you want. Like that is the first half basically. But then you have so many submissions left, like, and then you really have to start thinking about, okay, what are we going to put in there? And this is where writing a good abstract really helps to get your session uh, on top of the list. Because if they know, okay, this is what it's going to be talked about. This is what we can expect. The, this is uh, how he's going, what he's going to show. It makes it much easier for the people that are going through this to actually see like, okay, this would fit our conference. Or on the other end, this would not fit our conference. And that's also important because if your session doesn't fit the conference, you don't want to be in that conference because otherwise you'll just get negative feedback or feel like, hey, I could not bring what I want to bring there. So really make sure that your uh, abstract uh, uh, brings over the message that you want to bring there. Yeah, that's true. And that's also uh, you told me what you told me. Concentrate on abstract. Try to make it in a way that if, if that's the only thing you can tell people that uh, you will really, uh, you know, give the message like you will, be, you will be able to deliver a right message. And uh, you said that write an abstract, concentrate on it because I had like a couple of weeks and I will find the places where you can actually work. I will uh, suggest for you why you can start on actual speaking. And um, with all this like blog post you sent me and everything, you gave me a lot of information, like a lot of basically resources, mm. um, how to find, how to write an abstract. And I started kind of practicing, you know, I really tried a couple of times on different topics, topics like really, you know, uh, like about CAD, for example. So uh, just uh, as an example, um, there is a structure in a, in a, abstract in the way how you write abstract and the structure depends purely on the way how you want to do it what like what you found for for you for yourself the best way to deliver a message to people but there is always a structure kind of if you would read the hundreds of cp you you will see that there are similarities of how they from how the things are formulated and how the message is delivered so um as on the screen, you have like a um, message, like if you have a cat, I'm super jealous, but we all know how hard it is to teach them to jump on a, not to jump on a dining table, right? So the first part of the abstract was that we have a problem somehow. So there is a problem, there is an issue, maybe something's not working as, as, as expected. And, and there is a way how to solve it, right? So you can give a very, very short um, kind of um, a look on, there is a way to show it. it. It kind of can be like from five steps, consists from the five steps and um, make someone, make make uh, people interested. Like, OK, so he really found the way. He really knows how to do this. Um, so you kind of catch the interest and attention from people. And then you give us a bit of details for those who are uh, searching for something specific. Maybe it could be technologies. Maybe it could be some details of implementation or whatever. So you can say that uh, I will show like five uh, different ways how to how to teach a cat not to jump on a table. And then with the details like using just scotch ta tape and, and whatever else, we can really <laughs> we can really um, make our life easier and, and have our food without, you know, <laughs> without all the hairs and so on. And uh, that was like three blocks of uh, of a text, a couple of sentences in each, and there is a structure. This for me, like for a technical person by education, was the best way to understand how to write an abstract. There is a, a math behind it, you know, and I was like, oh, thanks God, there is math, not a creativity. <laughs> this is great. Um, I mean, I'm joking, of course, but sometimes, yeah, it's, it's much easier to, to make a first step when you see a structure. So that was very, very helpful for me. And that was exactly the way how I did my first presentation, my first abstract. And as you promised, you found some places where I can actually submit it. 
So then we started like, okay, now, now if you abstract, now you actually can, can, can take your first uh, steps as a speaker. Like, um, you have your abstract, how are we actually going to get you on stage? And the first part is actually, um, how do you find a place to speak? Because we all know, like, we see a lot of conferences out there, but how do you actually get to speak there? And this is where you really start looking for those CFPs or call for papers or call for proposals or however they call it. But so there's a lot of places where you can actually keep track of the CFPs. So first of all, I would recommend anyone that's still going to start speaking, create a sessionized profile, which we did with you like. Just go to sessionize, create a profile there, add your abstract. And sessionize these days has a very nice feature where you can actually see like, okay, give me, because when you build your profile, you just say, okay, I can speak about uh, Cosmos DB, uh, Azure Event Hubs, uh, blah, blah, blah. You put some different topics in there and actually sessionize will give you proposals of, okay, these are the parts you'd say that you can speak about. Here are some CFPs that we think that might be interesting for you. Of course, there's other ways as well. You can use Google, like you can set up Google alerts. Uh, there's on Twitter, there's like CCFP and other uh, like that aggregate those CFPs. So that's the first part, like start looking for the CFPs that might be interesting for you. Also, you can start contacting your local user groups. Um, you also did that. Uh, you actually spoke at some different user groups in Berlin, for example. You also spoke at some uh, like, uh, well, local in the virtual times, of course, is a bit less important. But you, because when we're virtual, everything is local because we just sit at our laptop or our PC and we just send it up. And no matter if this is in Germany or in uh, New Zealand, we can just do this. <laughs> but definitely also contact those user groups because those user groups are often looking for new speakers. They are often the first place to actually get started and they really want to have those speakers. And of course, uh, besides user groups, you also have meetups. Like meetups for me are like similar to user groups, but not quite. So user groups are more focused on a specific area often, a specific location. Meetups are more around a specific topic, but also submit your session there. So of course, make sure that you start looking, okay, I want to talk about IoT, for example. Start looking for IoT meetups. Uh, or if you want to talk about front end, like start looking at those meetups and just talk to them. And this, I think, is really important. Uh, start looking in network. And everyone has a network, like everyone knows someone that might know someone. So just start sharing that you want to speak. And of course, Elena, with you like, you had a lot of speakers around you that were helping you with this. Um, and, well, and me, of course, as your mentor, like I also knew a lot of people. But really start discussing with your network, like, okay, this is what I would like to speak about. And they will start reaching out to different people as well, saying, hey, we have someone that wants to speak about this. Let's find her or him or her a place to actually start speaking. Um, yes, but also, um, I was communicating in this point. It's it's a very like you know small detail, but uh, I wanted this. So we had the, of course we have a lot of friends and some of them speakers, some of them like working in different positions so on. But uh, they are our friends, you know. They are not sitting and waiting for someone to say like I want to speak and like it's not a it's not a, you know LinkedIn to connect people <laughs> for for the purpose. It's a um, I remember that I was at some point explicitly just reaching to people and just asking for some uh, for advice like or for is there maybe you know some places because I want to start um, speaking. I want to try myself. So it's very important not to be afraid uh, to reach to reach out even if you don't know someone uh, you if you went on the conference, if you went on a meetup, there was some speakers you made the contact even like you know just on Twitter. Uh, don't be afraid to reach to the speaker and don't be afraid to reach to organizers and ask, hey, I'm a new speaker. Uh, maybe maybe there is some place I can speak, I can try. There is definitely, if you can, it will be a great opportunity. If you cannot, I'm pretty sure that um, most of the times people will share a bit of resources, maybe we'll share different contacts, maybe we'll recommend you to someone else, but it's definitely, uh, that's why community exists. People will help. People will try to uh, somehow um, give you some different contacts or uh, help you to understand what is where, where could you be a better fit. So, by the way, we have about five minutes left for our extra sessions. Let's get the. Um, so, but there's a couple more things that we want to talk about, like. Okay. Um, and setting up a slide deck, for example, like um, this is also something that is uh, when you start first start speaking, it's also something like you have to start doing this. Of course, you saw the video for, from uh, DevPy PowerPoint, but then you actually have to start setting this up for yourself. So how did you approach this? Yeah, um, it was uh, also not easy thing to do because I'm not a PowerPoint developer <laughs> or something. But 
I well, I took my abstract, so I was also struggling. But remember, someone just told me write sentence, one sentence on each slide, uh, as you want to kind of follow your story, and then out of the sentence, find out how to actually fill uh, fill the slide with a with the content or picture or whatever. So that's exactly how I did. I realized that this is a story, so I have to interact with audience, or I just have to. Um, share my story, I have to, this has to be like, you know, a uh, nice flow of a story with a nice timeline and, and um, my story have to guide me, um, not the story, sorry, slide deck have to guide me through my session and help me to, uh, to basically communicate all the details of the story. And there has to be something my own, you know, even if I'm talking about EOT, Azure Cloud, whatever, whatever. If I'm talking, it's very, very technical. They still have to be a bit of my myself, a bit of personality. So it could be uh, some pictures, it could be memes, it could be a couple of examples from my experience. But it has to be something that makes it uh, like. Why am I talking about it? Like documentation, everyone have it. Like have everyone can read documentation or everyone can Google it. But what makes it ex like the topic I want to share and why am I passionate about it? So. It was not an easy, but starting from the structure, feeling it for me helped really to do a rehearsal with myself. I was just speaking, uh, kind of like presenting, pre presenting a session, and I was just trying to tell a story to myself and find out how I can uh, build a slide deck around it. I know maybe that's not the right way to do it, but it helped me, it, it, and I found it my way. I really, every time I build a presentation, I build it in this way, and it's the most easy, the easiest way for me so far. So, not the easiest part, but of course it's uh, more memes and it's going to be fine. <laughs> and, um, uh, yeah, so basically, as I already said, that uh, while I was preparing a slide deck, while I was preparing to the session itself, I was talking to myself a lot. And I'm pretty sure that my neighbors were quite <laughs> quite uh, disturbed by this, but uh, I was literally morning, couple of hours, I was talking, talking, talking. This helps in many things, in many points. First of all, when you say the same thing 10 times, you rephrase, reformulate, you also kind of um, teach yourself how to uh, how to um, express your thoughts, how to express the content, how to basically communicate some points. And also create it creates in your head kind of templates. Uh, if you want to say like how to, how to start a session, you know, it's it's becoming like uh, like a template. Okay, welcome everyone. You know, uh, those things are becoming usual and and getting easier with time. And of course, I'm not saying that it's all like scripted or something, but it's just you're getting used to the structure of the session. You're getting used to the to the way how to speak, and you practice multiple times. Um, you learning where where is the hard parts parts of the session for you where is the easier easier parts where you have to do a note where you don't need anything and um, then it's 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 helping you to uh, of course avoid problems but also make it more like uh, uh, fluent of how you present the session itself on um, and uh, after this you have to find an audience you can share uh, your session, you can make a rehearsal with. It could be your cat, it could be the mirror, <laughs> it could be your friends, your mom, your neighbors through the wall. Uh, they would really enjoy it. But it's really good to see people because it, when you do a rehearsal with yourself 10 times and you see a person for the first time and you try to make a rehearsal with a, with a, a live person, um, it's scary. It's like even if it's your friend, it's like scary and you're forgetting everything. So try to at least once or twice to do a rehearsal with someone because this makes this is different and it's going to be different on a stage and it's going to be different in front of camera and it's going to be different every time when you change the environment. Just most important, tr just just do this one time. So at least you will be prepared how how much like how scared you will be <laughs> or like how complicated it is. So. Uh, another thing is um, rehearsal with the couch in PowerPoint. Couch <laughs> with the couch, yeah. Uh, I don't know about this. I have, I had no idea that that kind of thing exists. And maybe you say, can say yeah, that. So the couch in PowerPoint. Um, I don't know if it's already in the PowerPoint, like the desktop version. I definitely know it's in the online version. You have like uh, you can rehearse with the coach, 
And basically what the coach does is just like AI that tells you like, hey, you should now stop using some stop words, um, take some more pauses, you're going too fast or you're going too slow. Uh, you might be using some offending uh, words. So it tells you about, okay, uh, what do you need to watch out for? And like I said, it all uses AI, so it actually learns from, uh, I think it also learns from your own voice and stuff like that. And I would really say like, this is a really easy way to get started um, to just see how is my session going? Am I using the right tempo? Am I using like the right intonation and those kind of things? So it just helps you get your presentation a bit better just before you go to that actual audience. Yeah, it was like a magic for me. I was like, really? They can do this? And it was really working. I was really fascinated by this. So the next step is of course to promote uh, your session. It's um, um, and that was for me a bit um, weird because I'm not doing this for promotion. I don't want to be a superstar. I want to share with people. I want to, you know, I want to interact with people. And you had a good point. You cannot share and interact with people and you would not be able to, to do this if people would not have an idea that you're actually doing this. So you have to promote. And it's not about being public popular or whatever. It's not about this. It's about reaching to people and saying, hey, come to me, let's have a talk, let's have a like just really um, like uh, letting people know that something is happening. So interact with, with events, uh, with like uh, conferences, with posts and everything on social media. I don't really like social media. I'm not a very active poster, but it is important to uh, spread the information help someone, help your friends as well to sp spread information, Co uh, like retweet, repost uh, some other information from conferences, from events. It doesn't have to be just about, about your events, about your sessions, but also about others, uh, because this like this works both sides. You share someone else and someone else will come and share your, uh, your work as well. And um, try to give people like a bit of context. What about the session? Like two words, three words, a bit of hashtags, uh, a bit of information so people would be uh, really uh, aware of like, okay, am I interested in this topic it's, it's in general? Because I might see a name, okay, okay, Elder is speaking tomorrow and I, uh, a big fan of Elder, and I'll come there, but the topic will be not interested and I will just, mm, or maybe the opposite, I would not uh, know what about the session, but I would not know the, the speaker and I'll be like, mm, maybe tomorrow I will check and it will turn out to be a really amazing session that I missed. So also the links also try to always try to include some of the content, uh, reference to the event, reference to the conference, uh, maybe a bit of the tech part, like what about uh, the session itself. Um, try to keep try to give as much information as, as, as possible in a small, basically, uh, chunk. And um, yeah, so um, so we are uh, close to time, so we uh, are going to uh, wrap up. But before we wrap up, actually, we want to talk a bit about, of course, because we have now talked about our story, like we have talked about how Olena started, how I helped him with mentoring. But of course, we also want to give you some pointers, like if you want to start on this, how do you actually start on your own journey? And so here it's important, like we have talked today about how we started, what we did, but you have to decide on your own path. That's very important. Like, don't just look at us and like, oh, they did like this, so I have to do it like this. No, choose your own path, like look in your own network, look in your own friend group, uh, go to the meetups, meet your local community, uh, and really decide on, okay, how do you want to get started? And the local community is very important for this because the local community are the people that you will be spending most of your time initially with. Um, because, uh, and of course, like in the virtual world, I think it's a bit different. Uh, we know this, like in the virtual world, your local community can be the whole world. So definitely also like go, definitely go visit all those different conferences all around. Also start looking in your local community because we are getting more in person again. And these are the people that are close to you that can help you definitely on your first steps. Um, so just start introducing the, yourself to them and make sure that people know about you. And like Olena said, it's not about uh, look at me, I'm this big guy or I'm this important person. No, it's about connecting so people know, hey, who is this person? What do they have to tell? So don't, you can promote yourself. Just don't be like, hey, I'm this very important person. No, just let the people see who you are and what you can do. And then just start building your own uh, content. Like, uh, and once again, it's your own content. 
it doesn't matter what you speak about as long as you are passionate about it. So really look at that uh, and start building your own content and start uh, really going out there and telling your story. And so, Olena, can you tell a bit about how you found this mentorship program for you and what do you think is important? Yeah, um, important first of all, not, not to feel pressured, stressed, or whatever. It, it's not, you're not doing this for, for whatever, for something, for, for the purpose of like, I don't know, uh, making money or, or something like this, or like saving someone's life. You're doing this to share, you're doing this first of all for yourself, for, for other people to spread information. That's how community works. That's the, the ecosystem. You you are going to be a part of something. You should not be stressed. If it's a, if you're gonna be stressed, and nervous, and so on, you're gonna be a bad part of the community. Like so, of course, like people are different and mood is, mood is different for everyone. But it has to be natural. You have to feel it. It, you, it has, cannot be forced. Let's say like this. So you have to be really. Uh, you have to click with person. Find someone you align with. And when we met with Elliot, I had no idea what you actually you, you would do. I saw that you actually Lego collector or something like this. But we talked, we talked a lot and we um, had many, many points, many similarities. And yeah, it was um, everything started before we even realized. So also no hierarchy. It's uh, it's not about I'm your mentor, you and so you shut up and just do whatever I said. No way. If that's happening, you try to rethink and, and try to find another way because it will end up that you would not be able to actually um, share, like show yourself in a way of um, build a personality, like build a speaker, like um, let's uh, how to say it. Um, basically be yourself. You cannot be, you would not be able to be yourself. You would not be able to share in the way you want. And, and the mentor as well would not be able to help someone or guide, but instead will create just a copy of, of himself. So uh, that's not the goal of, of the mentorship. It's not the goal. Mentorship is uh, support on the way, guidance, help a bit maybe, but not, uh, you know, um, book with the rules and laws how to, <laughs> how to speak. And yeah, so on the guidance, the rest should be on you. Uh, sometimes the, you helped me a lot. It was sometimes you really helped me, but that's all, all right because you never did anything like for me, like instead of me. You never build the abstract inside. Okay, this is your abstract. Now I'm gonna speak about this, and uh, that's all. That's settled. No, that was never um, a case. And remember that. Always in German. You have to have fun. If it's not the fun, if it's not fun, and it will get into like um, to the point when you will start having like a lot of conferences or or events or something, it will just have a, a constant tiredness, constant like depression because a lot of work, a lot of things, a lot of interaction, but you're not feeling this and you don't like it and you don't actually enjoy it. So if that's the case, change it because this will just really um, end up in, in a bad way. It has to be for you as well valuable. It's not that you just giving up, giving to people, sharing. It has to also give back, go, go like get back to you. So exactly. And finally, uh, our last advice: like remember, everyone has to start somewhere. So just start. Like just find something that you think is interesting, and just start with it. Like you don't have to succeed on like you don't have to be major success on the first thing you do. Just start somewhere, uh, align with someone. If it doesn't work as you want, go maybe ju just a bit and just keep on going. And with that, uh, we'd like to say thank you. So, Olena, thank you, uh, first of all, of course, for being here again. Thank you for this amazing year. It's uh, not even a year yet, but almost a year now that we did, uh, met each other. You started actually speaking in April and you have been doing an amazing job. So I'm proud to be part of that journey with you. So um, your contact details, I'm sure people can reach out to you. Yeah. Uh, same for me, like, uh, thank you everyone for being here today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the session. Um, and Elena, do you want to say some final words? Yeah, of course. Um, I want to say that we also always give in our contacts and it's not just, just for, for the slide. Uh, if there is someone with 
maybe ideas, maybe just even thoughts to try speaking or try getting into community more and more. The, but you don't know how to start. You don't know where to go. Reach out. We really have a lot of people by now that uh, just reached for just even for some tips or that uh, and already got uh, some new people that he's mentoring actually. So uh, reach out. We always willing to help and always will uh, willing to give some advice or maybe guide. So feel free and thanks a lot for the uh, sharing the stage again with you uh, was a pleasure, even if it's morning, but it's great. <laughs> Uh, thanks, DDD. It's uh, really a pleasure for me to be here. Uh, thanks for having us and amazing rest of the conference for everyone, right? And of course, okay. thank you, Rick, for being our amazing host as always. You're very welcome. Thank you very much, both of you. Um, please, if you look in Discord in the channel for this session, you can carry on the conversation with Elena and, and Elder there. There is a feedback form that I've posted a link in. Please do complete that. And just as a, a, a related aside, there are lots and lots and lots of speakers in Discord giving their time today who I'm sure would be happy to chat about how you can get into doing stuff in the community and being able to submit sessions to events like this one. So thanks very much all. Thanks, Alden and Elena, and bye-bye now. Bye. -bye now. bye.